It really is a special pleasure to join you today here at the 30th anniversary celebration of this unique institution. And I'm extremely grateful to the board and management for the kind invitation to be here. We've already heard of the various institutional achievements of the NDIC in the past three decades of its existence, the part that it has played in stabilizing the financial system, especially the periods immediately after the early days of privatization and private ownership of banks, and its role in the failed banks crisis that followed immediately after. And then the various professional and standards distinctions that it has received through the years. Few will deny that even its mere existence has reassured a sometimes nervous uh, system, if you pardon the pawn, that banks will be able to convert liabilities to cash to fulfill their potential obligations to their customers. I must also join uh, others who have already commended the NDIC through the years for professionalism and their steady, unexcitable, and conservative profile and for gaining international respect amongst uh, peers, for itself, and also for Nigeria. Not only are you a reference point for deposit insurance institutions globally, but also the NDIC, also NDIC officials have been preferred to the Executive Council membership of the highly respected International Association of Deposit Insurers, as well as the current chairmanship of the Africa Regional Committee of the IADI, uh, and uh, so many other performance of that sort. I must say uh, again that the NDIC has continually demonstrated that it is an institution that uh, deserves all of the accolades and commendations that it has received, not only today, but also in the past. But uh, I do not uh, now remember the name of the sage who said that one of the great disincentives to greater glory is past glory. Sometimes the status quo is so comfortable that, that the preparing for and taking on the new challenges may not gain adequate attention. I trust that the current board, whose talents and dynamism I can personally attest to, will be ahead of the challenges of the future. But it would be remiss of me not to mention some of my perceptions on some of the dynamics of engaging the future of our financial safety uh, systems. First is the number of institutions and the implicit and explicit tools in our safety system and their sustainability. Perhaps the most significant challenge the financial system that we've experienced so far was that bank crisis in 2009 and a lot of reference was made to it uh, by uh, Mr. Aigu Mokwede. Going by the manner of the resolution, it appears that the preferred option was the establishment of uh, AMCOM, an option that cost something in the order of about 5 trillion naira of money at that time. Since then, we've also seen the use of a mixture of bailouts and bridge banks. The problem for me, of course, is that the most, most of the reliable studies that we've seen show that an overly generous financial safety net or system have generally tended to increase bank risks and systemic fragility. My respectful view is that there must be some rethinking of the short and long term implications of the use of these tools and their sustainability in the coming years. And I think a reference was made to the fact that we may not even have that option of uh, this, the AMCON type bailout given the sheer enormity of the, of the uh, amounts of money that will be involved. The other issue, of course, is coping with the implications for banking of the disruptive technologies that are quickly changing the landscape of financial services. It seems to me that um, fintechs will continue to be the most profound force for change 
both for good and one must say ill as well, ever seen in the financial services industry. Indeed, already banks all over the world are investing in fintechs and may in time become fintechs themselves, as these firms, as these uh, smaller firms, are eating faster with more innovative systems uh, into the customer base of most of, of, of our banks. All sorts of innovation from what we see in mobile payment systems to the various crowdfunding ideas, etc. There's no question that regulatory institutions must now spend more time and resources on researching the nature and management of these risks, such as the speed of transactions, cross-border transactions, money laundering concerns, and data privacy and uh, security issues. Training to meet the required compliance capacity will also be very crucial. Thirdly, there are the challenges associated with the move towards financial inclusion. In the past four years, the federal government uh, launched, as you know, a social investment program. And in particular, the microcredit program covering over 2 million informal traders. And then our conditional cash transfer scheme, which is also covering over a million, uh, a million uh, of the poorest in our communities. All of these have formalized, to a certain extent, services to millions of individuals who are outside the banking system. And with our commitment, and the President has already stated, that we intend in the next 10 years to leave 10 million persons annually from extreme poverty. So we're looking at a much more phenomenally larger uh, customer base for the banks. And of course, with all of the implications that this would have for regulation. Again, with the signing of the African uh, Continental Free Trade Agreements, we are also bound to see even greater opportunities for our banks, whose footprints are already firmly all over Africa. Again, these opportunities plus technology present their own issues, both for the NDIC, for domestic deposit insurance in sister African countries, and of course the regional deposit insurance bodies. So the future is, without a doubt, exciting. But I dare say we'll also call for proactive, nimble, and a savvy uh, NDIC, as well as all other institutions constituting our financial safety net. And we must uh, especially, uh, and, and we must note this especially, and this is so because uh, those who should know, like Mr. Ike Bokwede, said without blinking that the regulatory infrastructure today, that we have today, belongs to yesterday, and that we may not uh, yet be prepared for the future. Now that is as uh, frightening as uh, one could possibly uh, have the facts. So there is a lot of work to be done. But today let me again congratulate the NDIC for 30 years of exemplary practice, you should be justly proud of your excellent history and antecedents, especially the firm shoulders of the pioneering leadership on which you now stand. You have truly every reason to celebrate. And so we pray that the next 30 years will be more glorious for you as individuals within the NDIC and for the NDIC itself. Happy 30th birthday. God bless you. Thank you.